You know how in AutoRig Pro you have a couple of pre-built rigs? Human, dog, horse and bird? Would you like to have a lot more of these? That's what you'll get with the AutoRig Pro rig library by Yoris, which you can get on the Blender Market. It's a collection of 24 professionally made rigs for AutoRig Pro. You have dinosaurs and dragons, giraffes and spiders and a lot more. This is a paid product, so here are some things that you definitely need to understand to make an informed purchase. First of all, this is an extension for AutoRig Pro, so you need to have AutoRig Pro first, and only then can you use these rigs. And second, these rigs are basically a combination of AutoRig Pro's sub-rigs, which are called limbs. So if you start from an empty armature, you can then start adding limbs, such as a spine, legs, arms, and so on. And by tweaking their positions and options, you can build your own custom rigs. There will be a detailed video about this on CG Dive in the near future. So these additional rigs here are made in this way. This should be obvious to more experienced users, but beginners may think that if you wanted to rig a shark, for example, you need the shark preset, but that is not really the case. You can build your own rigs. So the main benefit of these additional presets is that they can save you a lot of time. And another one that may not be immediately obvious is that the reference bones are laid out for you very clearly and very precisely. So you won't have to wonder where do I place the paw, for example, or if you had a horse, you know, where do I place the hoof and so on. The rig itself should make it very clear what to do, and I'm going to try to elaborate on this point later in the video. I think you'll love this rig collection if you are either a busy professional who wants quick access to a variety of AutoRig Pro rigs, or maybe if you're an artist who is not very technically skilled and you just don't want to be bothered with learning how to customize AutoRig Pro rigs, how to build your own rigs, and so on. By the way, Yoris has kindly provided a discount for CG Dive viewers. You can use coupon code CGDive10 to get 10% off, thanks Yoris. Now let's see how you can install the additional rigs. First of all, make sure that AutoRig Pro is already installed and you have the default rigs. Then once you buy the rig library, you'll be able to download a zip file. And if you open this zip file, it will contain 24 blend files and some install notes. And the notes tell you how to install the rigs, or you can let me show you. Go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and search for Auto. You'll find AutoRig Pro. Expand the add-on options, and here you'll see a file path. My file path is not exactly the default, but whatever you have, just follow this path and reach the AutoRig Pro master folder. Inside the AutoRig Pro master folder, there is an armature preset folder. And here you'll see a couple of blend files, which correspond to the pre-built rigs that you already know, bird, dog, horse, and human. And there may be some other files, it doesn't matter. Then go to your zip file, select all of the blend files, and just drag and drop them into the armature presets. You won't see them right away. You have to reset Blender, so just create a new scene and then you'll have access to the new rigs. And you can start adding them to your scene. There is this separator line and everything that is below it are the new custom rigs. To get familiar with them, I recommend that you just add each of them and play with them a little bit. Unlike the default rigs, the new ones will include this block mesh. This is just a preview mesh. It doesn't have a special function but it can improve the user experience. If I hide the mesh and just look at the rig controls, it's like, um, what am I even looking at, right? But if I display the block mesh, things are much more obvious. Another benefit of the block mesh is that I can clearly see the scale of my rig. So if I wanted to rig a Velociraptor, for example, the structure is close enough to the Allosaurus, but I would have to grab the rig in object mode and scale it down. And then I can go to edit reference bones and start aligning the actual bones to my character. 
And to me, the most important benefit of this block mesh is that you can clearly see how the bones are laid out. That is something that I mentioned in the beginning, but the bones in this collection are meticulously laid out. For example, if I zoom in here on the toes, you'll see how this big toe bone is exactly as long as the individual toes, and that is not random. This point here, and this point here, and this point here become a point of rotation for some of the controls of your rig. So if I match the rig, uh, I'll get this warning because of the scaling in object mode that I did. I just need to press yes and also select the animations that I want to rescale and press OK. So now notice how if I move this control up, it moves the leg exactly on its toes and then on the heel. This control will just raise the foot without affecting the toes. The IK rotates around this point here. So all you need to do is to follow the layout that these rigs give you and your controls will behave predictably. So these block meshes are cool and useful, but once they have served their purpose, it's safe to delete them. Now I'm going to undo because I still want this block mesh. The rig library has a basic version and complete version. And the main difference is that with the complete version, you get animations and with the basic ones, you don't. The animations that you get are one basic locomotion animation per character. So for example, this Allosaurus will have a walking animation. I have to go to dope sheet, switch to action editor. And here, instead of the default animation, I'll switch to the walk. And you may want to enable fake user. And if I play this animation, you'll see the Allosaurus walk. This can be nice to test your rig and to have at least one basic movement animation, but it's up to you to decide whether you need this or not. And if you don't, you can save a couple of dollars. Now let's work on a little demo. I'm going to rig this kangaroo model with the kangaroo rig that I got from the rig library. By the way, if you go to the YouTube channel of the creator of this rig library, you'll find additional tutorials. There is one showing how to rig a T-Rex with the Allosaurus rig. There is a giraffe example, mainly focusing on adding custom bones, and that can be very useful. So check it out. I'm going to link to this channel. But now let's try to rig the kangaroo. So I'm going to add a kangaroo rig here in object mode. Scale it down a little bit to match my model. And at this point, you can play around with the rig and see how it deforms the box meshes. If you want to understand your rig better, I think I understand it well enough so I can go to object mode and just delete the block mesh. Then for the rig, I'm going to go to edit reference bones and start aligning these bones to my model. So I'm going to align the front legs also from the side view. The default pose of this model may not be ideal. I would rather have the legs a little bit straighter, but we are going to work with what we have. So now I'm going to align the tail. Now let's grab the arm and align it roughly by using scale and rotation and movement. The hands and fingers will need special attention, so I'm going to come back to them at the end. Now let's work on the spine and head. I'm going to place the spine not where the uh, anatomical spine would be, but a little bit deeper into the body, like this. This is the head, so I'm going to align it here with the point of rotation of the skull, something like this. And this is the neck bone. If you want more neck bones, you can go to limb options and give it a count of two, let's say. And these remaining bones are the actual spine.
Now let's focus on the fingers. I like to switch to volume snapping and enable snapping and then I can just move these points and they'll snap inside the volume of the hand and fingers. You can also select the hand and finger bones and press Shift H for a second. Okay, looking good. Make sure to press Alt H to unhide everything. Match to rig does not work well if you have hidden bones. And now we can also focus on the feet and toes. So the toe bones should be somewhere around here. And let's disable snapping. In this tip of the toe bone, you should align with the tip of the actual toe mesh. Now, I only have one toe, and I'm going to align it with this middle toe. And you can leave it like this. Or, if you want additional toes, you can select the leg bone and press limb options and enable, let's say, index and pinky. Press OK. And let's do this for the other leg as well. Index and pinky, OK. And now I can start aligning these new bones to my fingers or toes. I'll press Shift H to just focus on this toe. And then Alt H to unhide everything. So I'm aligning the start of these toe bones with the large toe bone. And this will make the deformations and the controls in this area better. I forgot to align the ears. Just align them in front view and side view. And now I can press match to rig. Press yes. And check these kangaroo animations. This is because at the beginning I scaled the rig in object mode. Just press OK. Then I can go to ARP skin. And I like to disable preserve volume, but otherwise I'll keep the default settings. Select the mesh, shift select the rig, and press bind. Now, it is not working. Um, this is a problem with the mesh, it's quite messy. But here we can use another Autorig Pro tool. Just enable scale fix and try to bind again. Press OK. And now it will work. Notice how this control works exactly as it should work. And that's because we took some time to place these bones exactly where they should be placed. And that was easy to do because the rigs that we get with the rig library are nicely laid out and they guide us towards correct placement of the bones. So I have the arm controls in FK. They can be switched to IK, of course the head and some ear controls, center of gravity, and here a little bit hidden is the tail control, you can make it larger, and apply, edit shape, scale and apply. And the fingers also work quite well out of the box. Now I'm going to try applying the kangaroo jump animation that I got with the advanced library. So go to dope sheet, switch to action editor, and switch the animation to kangaroo jump, and enable fake user just in case. The animation will look strange, and that is totally normal, because we changed the rest pose of the rig, and that will be the case almost always. So we need to know how to tweak this animation, if you go to the YouTube channel of the creator of this rig collection, you can learn a method of tweaking these animations by tweaking the animation curves. And that is a great technique, you should learn it. But I'm going to show you another technique by using Blender's NLA. So go to the last keyframe of this animation and press Ctrl and End to set the end of the timeline. Then create a new window and switch it to NLA, Nonlinear Animation. Push down this kangaroo jump. I have a bunch of tracks here that I don't need. Then I'm going to create a new action and call it tweak or something like that. Select the animation and switch blending to add. Add layers are extremely powerful. They allow you to tweak an existing animation while keeping the underlying movement. 
So from the side view, I'm going to go to frame zero, grab the center of gravity and try to correct this pose and record location and rotation keyframe. And right away, it will start looking much better. I also want to correct the rotation of the head and record a rotation keyframe. These additional toes that I added were not animated. You only have animations for the original rig parts. So just select them, rotate them, set rotation keyframe, and that's it. Something else that I might want to correct are the arms. So just select these two widgets and rotate them back a little bit, record a rotation keyframe, maybe a little bit more. This animation is a loop, so we have the same pose at the beginning and the end. And then in the middle, there is the extreme of the jump. Here, the legs are overextended. So if I just grab these IK controls and position them correctly and record a location and rotation keyframe, that would fix this pose. But actually, I should have recorded keyframes at frame zero first. So delete this, go to frame zero. Press I and record a location and rotation keyframe. Select it and copy it over to frame 20. Then go to frame 10 and correct this pose here. And you can just keep tweaking the animation in this way until you're happy with it.